welcome. Happy, happy, what's today? Let's say, I think it's Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody is well. So, today we're going to do something a little different, all right? We are going to talk about um, be love and those alike, okay? But I specifically am talking about be love because, of course, all of the drama that is kind of surrounded around her regarding her siblings on this here thing that we call social media, okay? So the reason for this video is I think that it would help a lot of us in a lot of different ways if we kind of take a few pages from uh, Mrs. Uh, Beloved's book. If we take a few pages out of there, I think we could all be successful you know, and not be on the beloved hate train, if you will. Now, I'm not saying any of you are on the hate train, but there are some people in the YouTube streets that don't necessarily care for Miss Beloved, and that's their prerogative. Everybody's not going to like you, no matter what you do, okay? But hey, I can't knock a woman for her hustle and her success, especially a black woman. I'm here for it. So I was just reading, you know, and I was just thinking, I'm like, you know what? I want to be as unbothered as Beloved. Like, I want to be that unbothered. And I'm sure Beloved has her moments where she probably is a little concerned or a lot concerned about her family and the situation at hand that is happening all over social media. However, at the end of the day, uh, she does not show it on the internet or, you know, not to the point to where it's like, oh my God, you know, be love is pissed off or she's mad or something is going on. You know what I mean? She keeps it very professional on this here internet. She is very serious about her brand, her name and her business. And I think we could all, if we are in the social media business, could learn a few things from be love. Okay. And those alike. So anyway, I was just scrolling the internet and um, I was like, you know, what are the things that um, highly successful people that what what is it that keep them from wasting their time on uh, wasting their mental capacity, mental energy on foolishness. So I just wanted to get into a few things that I found very interesting and very enlightening and some things that I could actually uh, use for myself. Okay. So, um, yeah. So like just in life in general, like I think whatever job that you may have, whether it's YouTube or whether you work in corporate, whatever your job is, and if you want to be successful at it, I feel like we could take a few of these notes and, you know, just be more successful, if you will. Especially if you own your own business and you have like a a, a large social media following. So, all right. So basically, I wrote down a few things and I wanted to talk about those few things. Uh, I'm not going to be before you. I always say that I'm not going to be before you long, but I end up being here for three hours, but hopefully not today, but we'll see how this thing goes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. So the first thing that successful people like beloved and those alike don't waste their mental energy on is other people's drama. Okay. Now, this article that I had, it reads, anyone can understand how easy it is to get caught up in the intrigue of what's happening in other people's lives, which I definitely can get really intrigued. <laughs> you guys, anybody watching me knows that I can get a little intrigued about what's going on in other folks, folks' lives. You know, it's just human nature. All right. So regardless, getting caught up to the point of worrying and or obsessing about someone else's life status can be paralyzing. Highly successful people prioritize their own well-being 
and that very rarely includes immersing themselves in petty melodramas that have no ability to resolve regardless. That makes so much sense. It makes so much freaking sense. So I understand why a lot of times, you know, B-Love's name gets thrown all over the internet by her family, by whoever, and she just does not respond. She just keeps it moving. She makes her videos and she makes her money and she's on to the next video, on to the next venture, on to the next contract, on to the next bag. Okay. So I think that um, if those who are aspiring to be like beloved definitely needs to take a few notes out of her book. Okay. Also, micro distraction distractions. Now, this is one of the ones that I have an issue with as well. Uh, micro distractions are normally things like um, you know, being in your phone too too long out of the day. All right. It says that um, basically highly successful people set a time frame as to to when and how long that they'll spend on the phone, you know, browsing the Internet and social media or whatever. Now, some people um, use uh, social media as, you know, as their job. Like if you are a blogger or a gossip website, you have to go on social media to figure out what's going on. But uh, I guess what they're saying is we have to um, reserve some space to get other things done besides just browsing the Internet, if that makes sense. And I'm pretty sure that's definitely something Beloved does, because I remember when uh, Beloved first started, she used to like comments. She used to respond to comments and everything like that. But I think the bigger and the more that you grow, uh, the more negative comments that you receive. So uh, from my understanding, she doesn't respond or like any comments anymore, uh, just from my observation. So it kind of, you know, keeps her head clear as far as um, not having to deal with like people that are trolling or people that are saying mean things to her. You know what I mean? So I think not reading the comments has helped her a lot with her growth as well. So good for her. Go ahead, Miss B. Love. All right. So the next thing is um, ruminating and uh, which is like kind of reflecting but not taking action. So it says the moment when reflecting becomes ruminating is when uh, the intent to act dissolves in place of needlessly replaying certain scenarios or issues through your mind again and again. OK, and we all know that her family members, some of them. OK, I'm not going to say any names. We all know who it is. They play scenarios over and over through their mind again and again, which causes them to be angry, upset. It could also go into jealousy and envy as well. OK, it says highly successful people are usually very self-aware or at least try to be. This means that they spend a lot of time reviewing their behaviors and interactions and, eva and evaluating how they can improve. However, they do not waste their mental energy just thinking about what went wrong and not actively changing what they need to make the correction. OK, so basically they're saying is it's a waste of time to continue to harp on uh, a situation or a scenario when there's clearly uh, no ends to a resolution. So if there's no resolution to. A situation why are we continuing to harp on it and I think a therapy can help a lot with that as well so I'm pretty sure um, as you know big as be love is now and I'm not saying she's a, a B or C celebrity but she is a pretty popular youtuber so I can I can only imagine the stress and you know, the drama that she has to deal with in her mind. And I'm pretty sure she has to see a therapist. And I'm pretty sure she prays a lot as well. 
Um, I've definitely heard her say that she does pray and all those great things. But I definitely would uh, imagine that she has a therapist as well, which is I'm pre pretty sure is very needed um, with all the drama that is going on. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, oh, this is a really good one. So the opinion of anyone they wouldn't want to switch places with. Okay. It says highly successful people are very aware of the impact that their social circles have on the quality of their lives. Okay. They value their mentors, partners, and teachers. However, they do not give any weight to the opinions of anyone they would not want to switch places with. Okay. Yes. Why am I going to harp on your opinion of me when I don't want to switch places with you? Wow, wow, wow. What a word. That's a word right there. In the same manner, they also do not worry about those people potentially uh, of those about what those people potentially think of them. Exactly. So if I'm doing better than you, OK, why am I going to worry about what you think about me? What's the point? What's the purpose? What is the purpose? Why am I worrying about your opinion of me when I'm clearly doing better than you? Okay. Just saying. <clears throat> Let's see. All right. Then we have a uh, good morning, everybody. Tanya, Sarah, Miss Linda. Uh, Drusilla, hey, how y'all doing? We getting into all of these things um, about being successful and unbothered like Miss B loves life. Okay, this is how we want we want to be as unbothered as B love. We want to have financial freedom and all of the things, all of the things. Yes, we do. And if you don't want to have financial freedom and to be unbothered, this is not the topic for you. Okay, so that this is just not it. Because I aspire to be unbothered and financially free. Yes, indeed. Okay. All right. Someone says she's money hungry. Uh, so sh she's bothered on the low. Money hungry. I don't know if I could call her money hungry, but. I will say that she probably wants to maintain her lifestyle. So she, she probably is uh, trying to figure out how to maintain that uh, lifestyle. But I can't say she's money hungry. I don't I don't know. Um, we'll, but we'll get into that. We'll definitely get into that if you want to call in and talk about that and your opinion on that. Um, let's see. All right. The next topic we got. Oh, this is a good one. This is something that um I used to struggle with. Um, feeling guilty about taking time for themselves. Okay. Uh, we can actually think about when B Love and Nate were were just in Miami and didn't uh hit up Adrian. And like I said before a few weeks ago, she just didn't really want to be bothered. She wanted to hang with her man. I don't see nothing wrong with that. Okay. So it says established people understand that success is a holistic thing. You aren't able to perform your best if you're tired, undernourished, or, or experiencing any other kind of extreme imbalance in your life. That is very true. That's why it's common to see uh, highly successful people as committed to relaxation and wellness as they are work and productivity. Exactly. So when they met, went to Miami, they wanted to chill. It wasn't about work. It wasn't about, hey, can we do a video together and all of that? Um, no, it wasn't about that. They do not spend time guilting themselves over everything they could have gotten done over a three-day weekend or why they shouldn't take time off if they really need it. Exactly. All right. And another one is justifying their place in life, often committing to any kind of work that's not typical, incurs the, the questions and at times judgments of those who either don't believe in your mission or are skeptical of its future success. However, consistently feeling the need to explain or justify your place in life is not 
only a tireless pursuit. It's pointless. You are never going to earn the approval of people who don't want to give it. And highly successful people understand that. Yeah, so stop looking for the approval of others, okay? We have to stop looking for the approval of other people because everybody is not going to see the future that you see for yourself, you know? So we can't, you know, harp on what other people see our future as. If God has shown you, okay, this is what, you know, the desires of my heart is, okay? If God showed you that, then you have to go for it. Don't let nobody stop you from it. And I, I'm preaching. I'm preaching to me. Okay. All right. Let's see. Another one is senseless worrying and unchecked thought patterns. Okay. One of the biggest ways that people rob themselves of their own energy is by worrying. Yes, worrying. Worrying is the practice of preparing for the worst possible outcome, and then believing it is not only possible but most likely. However, worrying does not make you more prepared to cope with life's difficult moments. It makes you more inclined to actually create your fears. If you were to write down a list of everything you've ever worried about in life, you'd find that 99.9% .9 of it was groundless and didn't come true. That is so true. If you were also to make a list of everything you didn't worry about in life, you discover that worrying actually didn't change the outcome of anything. It only zapped your energy in the present. Yes. Energy is so important. You have to put, we have to protect it y'all. And if anything, worrying only makes things more difficult and skewed and less enjoyable. It is not productive and highly successful people train themselves to focus on anything else. Yes. Got to protect our energy guys. And let's see. All right. Uh, anything they don't deem to have long-term value, okay? Uh, highly successful people understand that what they put their energy into grows, okay? All right? So whatever you're putting your in, focusing your energy on is what's going to grow, okay? So we have to be very careful about what we put our energy into. If they want their worries to grow, they focus on them. If they want their success to grow, they focus on that instead. They are also very focused on the long term and therefore highly successful to people. Uh, success, successful people do not worry about that which they don't deem to have value, even if it is something society tells them they should care about. These people are outliers, individualists, and most of all, free thinkers. They do, they do not live their lives be um, they do not let their lives be dictated by that which the rest of the world is bogged down by. Okay, so I just wanted to touch on those few things that I was reading about, and I'm like, wow, this is definitely something that I aspire to, um, you know. Be because I have a lot of things that I need to work on personally. You know, I'm sure we all have some things that we can work on and, you know, um, all these different things. And the reason that I brought this up is because I've learned that um, what I'm seeing is the difference between Adrian and Beloved. There is a huge difference. Um, Adrian is a worrier. She is, she harps on things. She doesn't let things go. She constantly um, is angry, thinking up things in her head to stress her out and make her angry. And be love is the total opposite of, opposite of that. And it just shows what you focus on and where it can, you know, take you in life. Like depending on what your focus is in life, that's where your life, I mean, that's where your future is going to be. Like you really have to, we, I'm not going to just say, you know, Adrian, I'm talking to really everybody. Like we really have to take time out to figure out what the heck is bothering us. Why are we continuing to let it bother us? And how can we move on from it? What is it that we can do to move on? from it because 
we all want to be successful. We want to live a happy life, right? Okay. So now I'm not saying we everybody want to be like we love. I mean, I don't want to be like we love. I want to be like me. But what I'm saying is the reason that I brought this up is because I felt like we could all learn something from the way that she deals with controversy, if you will. You know, she doesn't get on here every time Adrienne throws her name up in a video and just goes. She doesn't clap back from uh, to her. She she just doesn't. What's, what would be the purpose? What would be the purpose of it? All she would be doing is bringing her brand down, clapping back to Adrian. That's all she would be doing, bringing her brand completely down to a very low level ratchet situation. And I know B Love is not trying to do that. She has become way too polished. Okay. Her quality, the quality of her videos, everything. Like, why would she jeopardize that? Her sponsorships. Why would she jeopardize, jeopardize that just to get on here and start cursing out her sister? I just think it's always a beautiful thing when another black woman can be become a millionaire, be successful. I mean, and she didn't do it doing anything. She didn't become successful by doing anything illegal, you know, or out of control. All she did was sit there and eat her crab legs and chicken and uh, make her some sauce and make a lot of money off of making some sauce and everything else. So, child, listen, I'm here for it. Miss B Love, okay? I am here for it. And I just wish, and, and you know, I was watching some of their old videos. I'm going to be honest. I really think Adrienne could be a successful YouTuber. Like her, I really think she has it in her. To, she has it somewhere deep inside in her. If she really, really, really wanted to be successful in this YouTube thing, she could do it. But the only thing she, she needs to, I think she needs to go to therapy and just really take some time out to like self-reflect. And she's going to have to go really deep with that. Okay. But I really think Adrian, at the end of the day, she's funny. Um, I think she can have a great personality sometimes, kind of, you know, she's fun. You know, I really think that she could be successful. I really do, y'all. But she's going to have to get some help. That's it. I mean, that's that's just my thoughts on it. I really think she's just going to need some help. And I feel like if she was a more positive person and not full of drama, I feel like B-Love would have, you know, been more open to helping her even more. That's just my opinion. You know, I really do. I think there is a good person deep down inside there. But she's just going to have to get the help. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I just want her to, because I think she got it. She's a nice looking woman. I, I, I don't know. I just, I hope she figures it out. That's, I mean, I don't know, y'all. I hope she figures it out because she basically, um, she she has something that most people don't get. Like your your sister is a um, a millionaire YouTuber. How many people can say that? I mean, I would take advantage of that. Now, I'm not saying do everything exactly how she did it. Hell no. Because I won't be able to do it exactly like B-Love did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I curse and, you know, I like to kiki and ha-ha and, you know, have a little fun. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just think she takes it too far. Like, I would never put, I would never put my family on blast. Ever. I don't care what they did. Never, ever. Mm -mm. Just won't do it. Absolutely not. I wouldn't care.
what the heck they did, there is no way that I would put my family on blast. Seriously, so I don't know, y'all. Um, so I see that there's a lot of people talking about the Heidi girl today. I really listen. If y'all expected me to watch that on this live, I'm not doing it. And I'm gonna tell you why. It's way too much cursing. I had to hit a censorship button before I even clicked to watch the video. And it, she's going in on uh, the Puff Puff Gang and Walt and, you know, everybody in that whole situ circle situation. So, yeah, I, I'm not watching that, if it, you know, just in case anybody was wondering if I was going to put it on here. I'm not um, going to feed into that. Um... Because that was just a lot going on. Um, but we could talk about it. But I'm not playing the video. I'm not sure if y'all saw the video. But uh, yeah. It was a lot. If we think B-Love and Q. If, it, if we think about B-Love and Q. B-Love didn't come strong. Ignorant with that situation. However she did address it. Um. Yes, yeah, she did address it. So are you saying that you think that she should address Adrian? What do you think? I think Adrian have regrets and should have in her life. Okay. Yes, she can, but she needs to put aside all that foolishness. She She's very hilarious. She is. Be love, in my opinion, shies away from drama. Yes. Very much so. I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, it's, you know, gotten her to where she is today. You know? So, I don't know. Hey, ain't no telling with Lucille. How you doing? When you have 25,000 fools cheering you on, it's possible. Oh, and I was going to talk about that too. Do, uh, it's crazy how she started YouTube kind of at the same time B-Love started, right? And she only has 25,000 subscribers. Um... Walt been on for like a year and he got 60, almost 68, I think now, thousand. Um, this, to me, that says a lot. Now, I will say, I think what helped Walt a lot too is the fact that Walt has done quite a few collaborations uh, with his sister. Now, Adrian has two, especially in the beginning. Okay. So they have both done quite a few collaborations with Beloved. You know, um, but I think Adrian's drama and attitude is what has held her back. Yes. Monica Barlow says Nicole has a, over one hundred and twenty-five thousand exactly, and, and and why why do you think Nicole has over one hundred twenty-five thousand? Tell me why, somebody. I'm gonna tell you what I think. I think it's because Nicole really doesn't engage in the drama. People write nasty comments to her all the time in the comment section. She doesn't listen to it. She probably gets a lot of advice and actually takes the advice from Beloved. You know. Um, either you could take the advice or not. And, and, you know, if you don't take the advice and do your own thing, depending on how you do it, that's how it pro that's probably going to determine your growth. Okay. She was mentored by beloved. Yes. Nicole also was able to capture a different demographic as well. Very true. Cause she is, um, uh, what is she? Caucasian, right? She's white. So, yeah, that, that definitely helps her as well. I got to be honest because YouTube is very, um, they tend to push a lot of Asians and Caucasian YouTube channels. 
Okay. So we, the black folks, are basically at the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to basically anything. <laughs> like, to be honest, any fucking thing, anything. You know? So we actually do have to work a lot harder than, you know, the average Asian or white person on YouTube, okay? Because if we're very honest, uh, the let's just go here, all right? And I'm finna, I'm finna kind of compare. Let's just do a comparison, right? Y'all know the girl, Catch Me Outside, right? The white girl, Bad Baby, whatever her name is. Okay, she got famous from acting a fool, cussing out the audience, her mama, Dr. Phil, and everybody else. When she was on Dr. Phil, I think she was 13 at the time. Now she's 18. Okay. This girl has made so much money from being ignorant and what they call ghetto. Oh, she acting black and ghetto. But when we do it, it's like, okay, that's not cool. Uh-uh. She's too ghetto. Hell no. We can't hire her. Oh, no. We can't have her. She do too much. She doing too much. You know. So... It's just, unfortunately, it's just one of those, th those things being a black person. Um, we have to work a thousand times harder than the Asians and the whites. And we have to be more um, clean, if you will, with our language, with our parents, everything. Uh, a lot of times, uh, depending on what angle that we're trying to go in. Um, to become successful, so I don't, I don't know, y'all. It, it just really messed up all the way around. It really is. Yes, white privilege is definitely a thing, especially on YouTube for sure. Absolutely, and everywhere, everywhere, corporate, everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. We can't run away from it, you know. Okay, guys, I had to stop the clip right here because there was uh, a clip that I played during this particular live uh, from one of Be Love's Life's videos, and I got a copyright, so they deleted the stream completely. So this is why this video is being uploaded as either a premiere or a regular upload. It just depends. I'm not sure how I'm going to upload it yet. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to touch on uh, how unbothered um, Beloved is and how being unbothered can definitely get you to the top. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you like it or not. Well, I don't know if I, you know, whatever. Like or thumbs down, whatever. I just felt like doing a video like this, something a little bit different. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.